when major, when maybe they have agreed to do something on a particular time, if one person should say no, the rule of the that such a person will be sent to be cut off. But we cannot put the rest anybody sent here. But the rule is when our leader says this is it, you do not have any right to say it is not like that. And when his evidence announces, you don't need to be worried. Even if you make a mistake, it's the world after we ask and not you. Why should you not be free and follow in whatever he says and take it as final? And you say, God, your own reward becomes of you fear Allah by following your leaders and you allow them to be happy with you and your leaders will also appreciate you. The meaning is that your own becomes strong. So whatever it is that does, don't worry. It's the one that Allah will ask and not you. I usually give an example of an imam that is leading prayer. Thousands of people are behind him and his ablution has spoiled and he refused to leave the scene. Everybody has prayer except the imam who does not have. So why are you worrying yourself? that Allah has given you the opportunity. It doesn't concern you. Let them do whatever they like. Allah will also bless you, even when they make a mistake. And when Ramadan goes, what do we do? Ramadan has come, and it is going just like the thing full of an eye. It came with its own aim and purpose and objective. Allah said, alaykum kama Allah and I said, the end and purpose of you fasting is that you will be conscious of Almighty Allah, that you will be sharing Almighty Allah, that in the, in the secret and in the open, what you have learned in the month of Ramadan, perhaps you always remember, Ramadan is the only time that human beings used to experience Allah, because you are in the, top, in the most darkest part of your room, you have the key. And you have food. You can eat and close the door and come out and say, Today's fasting is very hard. But Muslims will not do that because you are sure, even if you are under your bed, Almighty Allah is there with you. And that is one thing that we have learned during the month of Ramadan that let them let them go so that you can have that one. Then we should ask ourselves, what does Allah mean when he says taqwa? And taqwa, I always put it. It is the consciousness of the beingness of the Supreme Being at all the time. The continuous consciousness of the beingness of the Supreme Being that is called Mighty Allah. And that also means righteousness of our action and intention. When our actions are clean, when our intentions are right, it means we are conscious of what Mighty Allah. It means what we have learned during the month of Ramadan. That is to be conscious of the continual fitness of this free being. It is already internalized in our system. Ramadan has also come with his blessings and blessing. The blessing of bilateral accord. That Allah says that is done in the Malay, that is what we are the eating of being in the Holy Amr. Salam, the Yahatta, and the Lai, and the And Allah says that the, the angels will come down. I always explain that verse. To mean that if somebody tells you that some scouts are coming to this mosque now, and they tell you that those scouts they will come either on a particular date or in particular date, they give you like four or five options that they will come, everybody will get ready. And they say those scouts, if they come, they will be giving you 15, 15 million naira every month. And when you get there, you will not walk. All what you need to do is that they need to meet you well. He said, these are the criteria, and I ask you, if you are fortunate to have such an opportunity, what will you do to prepare for those scouts? So many people have many things is going in our minds. What will be most at last for 83, 45 years, almost 85 years, without sleeping, without eating, without doing anything? And that is the opportunity that the United States country has presented to us as Muslims. And our time has also called with the blessing of the restitution of the glorious Quran. If you want to know what Quran is, even when you don't know the meaning, just begin to read the Quran, or begin to listen to the Quran. Believe me, no matter your problem, 
you will discover that your system will become that. I remember the story of one big man in this country. He said when he was going to do his master's abroad, his father gave him Quran. He said, I'm giving you Quran. Whenever you have any problem, just speak your Quran. As a young man, he said, when he go to UK, he forgot about the Quran. But when they had problem and they took him to court, and what he needed that time was about 1,000 pounds. And it was a problem. Where will he get 1,000 pounds? And he remember what his father told him that whenever he has any problem, he should speak the Quran. On opening the Quran, he began to read, and now saw an open object that his father has put inside the Quran for him. He was able to solve his problem. And up to today, that man is still alive. No week passed without him reciting the old Quran for more than 45 years up to now. The meaning is, Quran, we have the opportunity that everything that we are looking for, what Allah is in the Quran. And also, Ramadan also comes with the blessing of unqualified generosity. That Quran has guided us that this is Ramadan where you learn to be generous. But where Ramadan goes, what are we going to be doing with it? And Quran has also come with its own blessing. The blessing of the relationship between you and our Lord, Almighty Allah. The blessing of relationship with our fellow creatures and relationship with ourselves. Many of us do not understand that when you serve Allah, you create a kind of synergy, communion between you and Allah. And when you help others, you create a right atmosphere between you and your fellow human being. And when you clean and clear yourself, then it means you relate with yourself well. When you eat Allah. And Ramadan has also come with his own dream. With his own dressing. Among the dressing of Ramadan is Tarawih prayers. It is the tafsir session and it is the lava constancy. In short, Ramadan has come as a school. It means, it is a means to an end. Mind you, Ramadan is not an end on its own. Ramadan has come to teach us how to make our life better because Allah says, to Allah in the Tehu. The essence is for us to be able to be conscious of Allah. And it means you learn that consciousness from the month of Ramadan. And when it is fading, another one will come. It means that what we have learned in Ramadan must be strictly adhered. We have learned generosity. We have learned to do so many programs. It is even that area that has achieved the life of the Muslim. So many Muslims will be organizing so many programs during the month of Ramadan. They will be feeling. They will be having television programs. They will have radio programs. They will have public preaching. They have reading of so many good things and driving so many things. But the moment Ramadan goes, the following day, everything has set up water. You will not hear of anything as if we are living in a ghost. This is not the teaching of Ramadan. And also, during the month of Ramadan, let us review what we have learned. Perhaps we'll be able to know what we continue to do with. We have learned one. We have learned goodness during the month of Ramadan. Everybody's mind is feel like doing something good to other, to himself. We have learned to be patient because during the month of Ramadan, the Prophet said, You must take something early in the morning. That is when you are not hungry. And when you are hungry, he says, you put anything in your mouth that is going to pass for 61 days. And we have also learned compassion because no matter how small, we want to help ourselves. We want to be compassionate to ourselves. And we have also learned to die. We have learned to be close to Allah every time. Nobody wants to say anything bad. Nobody wants to do anything wrong. Everybody is conscious. And we have love for Allah things. If you want to do anything, you will say, ah, I am fasting. You want to do things that is not good. You will even ask yourself that God will not accept your fast because you know this is Haram. And also, now that has also taught us to be peaceful and to restrain ourselves from things that perhaps we might not be able to sustain. But Allah says, despite that, I dare not mind that. This is the key word of Ramadan. I dare not mind that. It is for a, no, for a number of days. It means, whatever you are, you put your problem and prospects in the heart of Almighty Allah. And also, it means this life 
is just for a specific time. Things that you love, that you think you are the one. And that's a special one do that. No matter how close to his heart, it is for a specific number of days. And even whether you are enjoying something, and you feel that this enjoyment throws so bad, Allah tells us, look at the coming of Ramadan, where everything is free for you from Allah. Allah says, I jam that. It is for a specific number of days. Even if it will turn you back, you should know that it is for a specific number of time. When you are even in pain, it is for a specific number of time. When you are able to get what you are looking for, it is for a specific number of time. And when you are able to get it, you should also know that it is for a specific number of days. Now that Ramadan is going, but matter of that, it's going to test us with either the victory. Perhaps we do not understand that even the victory and everything that surrounds it is about test from Almighty and love. And I want to see, I want to summarize everything we have done for the past 30 days. That have we actually have we learned anything in the last 29 or 30 days? That is what Almighty Allah summarized for us in less than two hours. And I want to see whether we are patient. Patience during the future. We should know one thing that during the Hutbah of the Victory, unlike the human prayer, Hutbah comes after two record prayer. It is then you begin to see the Muslim that many of us have not learned anything. The moment the man finishes with the two record prayer, you see everybody standing up. Most people will not listen to the sermon because they have not internalized the teaching of Ramadan. We are also going to be tested with obedience that are we going to follow the Imam the way he has asked us to do it? And also, we will be tested in our compassion. That is the of the future. That will you be able to do it at the right time and in the right way? I will explain more about the of the future. Let me give you, let me make you think. If you go to university, you read law, and after graduation, you attended law school, and you come out in the flying colors. In your results, what is your profession? We will call you a lawyer. Okay, let's say that after graduation, you got a case to defend a particular litigant in the courts. And when you are going to the courts, you wear your kaftan or you wear your barrier. And in the courts, while the judge is there, you are sleeping the motion you love most. And they are waiting for you. Do we, if we ask you, in that court, are you still a lawyer? The answer is you are just a jester. You are not a lawyer. If you are to be a lawyer, what you have learned in school, and it is the time for you to practicalize it, now you get to the place where you are going to practicalize it, you are not doing the other thing. That is exactly what happened to Muslims who have passed for the 30 days, 29 or 30 days, and after Ramadan, it was not practice what he has learned during the same, during the months of Ramadan. Ramadan has come. I can say it's almost going. But as come as a refresher as a, and a training course for all the fasting Muslims. Immediately after Ramadan comes, the Muslims should face the cat of the picture. He should observe each prayer and he should follow it with the 29 or 30 days of fasting with another fasting called Sister Shawa. The Prophet said, said, He who fasts Ramadan and follow it up with six days of fasting in Shawa is like somebody who has fasted for a whole year. It is a simple mathematics. I said, don't forget your salat and don't forget your tahajjud that you used to do. Perhaps I do not know whether many of us have taken the opportunity to say that our tahajjud that we started during the month of Ramadan will also continue. Do not forget the reading of the Lord's Quran because Ramadan is going. And do not forget to be compassionate to others during the month after Ramadan has come. Do not think it is just for Ramadan. I've said it. It is not Ramadan is not an end on its own, but it is a means to an end. And do not forget voluntary passes of Mondays and Thursday. The ayah will be the 13, 14, 15 of the Islamic calendar. Do not forget that those passes, they are still there. And we should not ask, you should think of what you should do for Islam now that Ramadan has come and it's almost going. Like in your Zakat of the future, many of us 
we made some mistakes. But there are advertisements in which is going on now among scholars, whether it could be used, whether we could use money to do our zakat in the future or not. And my stand on this, personally, I say that if you give somebody rights, perhaps about eight or eight stars, and the rule is that that person should be before he leaves his house, how is he going to cook rice before the time of prayer? I always suggest when you give grace, if Allah bless you, also add money to those people that you are going to give. And also, it is the grace that you are going to give should be the same one that we will, that is common in the community. And for action of an average man, that is, you put your hand together and you draw any grain for is meant for one person and it will be given before each prayer. In Al Habibiyah, inshallah, we collect Sakat of the but we do not, the moment the prayer is about to start, we do use to collect it again. We might actually return it for people who bring for us when prayer is about to start because we have gotten a rule that the moment the cut of the future is given to us, we distribute it immediately. And it's not meant for the man, it's actually meant for those that Allah has said to go for. And that is why you see, during it too, Allah has told us it is a recurring job. Because it is something that comes almost every time. Our Eid, inshallah, is going to be by 9.30 a.m. Any day that the government declares. But I want to use this opportunity to remind us of those important things which we have agreed that we used to do during this month of Ramadan. It is giving and giving and giving. Perhaps we should not forget that this giving is one thing that can change our life. It's one thing that can stop the security challenge which we have in this country. And I give you an example of what we have seen in this month. Perhaps many of us are aware that we feed about 2,000 people every day and we spend between 700 to 900,000 every day in feeding these people. But Alhamdulillah, all those that have been helping us, we pray that Allah in His infinite mass will continue to help all of you. All those who have been part of this program, we pray that Allah will continue to make your home a better place for you and thereafter to be the best of all the places for you. We experienced one thing during this month of Ramadan. Somebody brought in an expensive wristwatch. We now ask him, why did you not take this wristwatch and you sell it and you make money? He said, why do I need to sell it? If I sold it, what I want to do with it is what you people are doing for us. You are giving us food. Then I'm happy with that. So he will return it back. What I'm trying to say is, if we continue to help other people, so that we fix them and we empower them. I assure you, even our country will be better. The moment somebody is well fed, they will not think back. And that is why I encourage us that not to forget what we are doing during the month of Ramadan. I can say with gratitude to Allah that after this Ramadan, our own will continue in a small way, the way we feed people during the month of Ramadan, as every Friday that is also going to be feeding until perhaps Allah bless us. We are able to expand the feeding more than more than just one day. And also, the Prophet Salah Salah was first of sellers. As Salawat of Khamus, while the Juma, or Ramadan in Ramadan, or Farah in the Mabayna, is a kind of Bakhs al Kadar. That the Prophet was quoted to have said that the five daily prayers, the Juma prayers, from one Ramadan to another, Clears and clears the scene that we are that we are committed in between them. If we are going to the Kabbalah, the big big things, and I want to say apologies to those who have been supporting us. But Allah says, "Inna la yaru bil alimani yasan, wa ita yadi kulfa wa yana al fashar wa muntah wa nubal yadi kum la da kum ta da." Allah commands us to do not do that. If we are doing that, He He forbids us to do things that are rebellious. Instructing that you will receive admonition. I want to thank all those who have been supporting us in the mosque. Perhaps many of us will be looking at this mosque and see where are they getting it. Almighty Allah has been supporting us with some good people around. But Alhamdulillah, things are almost still now that we do not have the opportunity of continuing. 
and I want to appreciate those who have been supporting us, both in the open and in the secret, that Allah will continue to support you all. And that also, I want to make a special appeal because this must has one unique facility that is not common in this country. This prayer, this must, you can actually pray at the rooftop. But unfortunately, the rooftop has not been treated and is being threatened by me. We pray that those that Allah has blessed will please come to the aid so that they will not destroy this work that Allah has used you to do. And I also want to appreciate those who have been in charge of the food bank that Allah will continue to bless you all. And I want to thank also those who have been coming to the mosque to come and eat because if we were not born, we are sure hunger will not kill you. But it means it is an honor that you are eating with us. It's not that we are the one that are honoring you. You are actually the one honoring us because you give us the opportunity to prepare for our hereafter in such a way that it will be assured. We want to thank you that Allah will bless you and also support you that very soon it will open way for you that we are among those that we feed it in wherever you find yourself. Allahumma inna ka afuun to hibu le hafuwa faafu anda. Allahumma inna ka afuun to hibu le hafuwa faafu anda. Allahumma inna ka afuun to hibu le hafuwa faafu anda. Rabbana alayka dawa kalna wa ilayka anabna wa ilayka le masir. Rabbana zalamna anfusna wa inna mtadfur lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al-fahzumi. Rabbana ifta'a bainana wa bainna qawmina bila haq wa anta khairun fatihi. Rabbana atina bi dunia ahsanata. وفي الآية هذه أحسن وكنا نعلمنا سبحان ربي رب العزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين